the other the other big story, obviously, as well, is uh, Douglas Ross, and obviously the seat that he parachuted himself into, um, he has now lost, and the SNP obviously put a lot of um, their resources into into that. I mean, this now means that the Tory party in Scotland do not have a leader mm. and he doesn't have a seat at Westminster. John, how do you think that's going to play out for the Tory party in Scotland? Yeah, I mean, it's just another disaster, isn't it? Interestingly, like, as we speak, Rishi Sunak's making a speech in the steps of Downing Street in which he's expected to resign as well. So the Tory party really are now completely rudderless. There's a collection of misfits that are going to be lining up to try to become the leader to drag the party off to the right. And that is a big story is going to be whether they choose that direction or try to you know, go for a, possibly Jeremy Hunt as a as centrist candidate. So and yeah, in Scotland, the Douglas Ross parachuted himself into this seat saying that he wanted to lead from the front and that he was doing the right thing by his party. Absolute disaster. He's, um, effect, he's effectively stamped all over an ill colleague. Um, and who knows what might have happened in that seat had had had, had yeah, he not but... that there was perhaps a, a chance that Dugan could, could have could have actually actually won there. So it's yeah. kind of sums up what a disastrous um, night this has been for the Conservatives and how they've kind of brought this upon themselves with their own mm. selfishness. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, Hannah, had, say, say, you know, the party decided that, that you know, David uh, Duckett wasn't able, and that's what they did to stand. Do you think had they put somebody else in there, another Tory candidate other than Ross, then they might have actually held on to it? Do you think it's Douglas Ross was the problem and what he did? Well, yes and no. I think that Douglas Ross is a high profile, you know, one of the most high profile Scottish Tories. And there have been various sort of questions around, you know, the fact that he's got three jobs, uh, his expenses for those jobs, etc., but I think it's actually not about who replaced David as the candidate. I think it's the way that it was done. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that the rug was pulled out from under David Jugood, you know, without him even really knowing. Mm -hmm. And then he hasn't kept his mouth shut about it. He's made it quite clear that he's unhappy about the decision that he had been planning to stand. Um, and I think just that... It, the optics, if you, I hate that word, but the optics of it um, just look bad. It makes them look as if they're all sort of, you know, greedy and selfish and they're willing to stab one of their own colleagues just to, to try and, you know, to take the job. So I think if there had been more of a sort of discussion and agreement and explanation with David prior to, you know, announcing who was going to be the candidate, it could have been very different. But I think that played a huge role in that area because people were unhappy. And I actually think David was quite a kind of well-liked MP. He was quite a yeah. good local MP. So, yeah, I don't know if it's really so much to do with Douglas Ross as a person or if it's to do with the way that David was treated. 